sanctuary praise him in his mighty heavens praise him for his surpassing greatness praise him on the drum and on the tambourine praise him with the string and flute praise him with the sound of trumpet praise him with the clash of cymbals and the resounding cymbals let everything that hath breath praise the lord
me, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Baby, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy would come to make you new? This child that you deliver will soon Of the goodness of God. 
sing this lyric. You sing. Your goodness is running after. Yes. It's running after me. It's the goodness of Jesus. Your goodness is running after. Makes it happen. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Talking about your goodness. Your goodness is running after. Yeah. It's running after me. Here we go. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Yeah. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good oh, With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Sing it with the angels I will sing oh, Forever and ever, I will sing of the goodness of Everybody, I'd like to welcome you in this Christmas Eve with us here at People's Church. It's a very wet and stormy Christmas Eve this night, and we were supposed to have an on-site uh, session, but because of the rain and the strong wind, we have decided to unplug and go online. So I'd like to say, I'd like to say thank you for being with us tonight. Today, I'd like to give you a message of hope. The theme for our Christmas Eve this year is the thrill of hope. And so tonight I'd like to give you a message about the hope that God gives us. The entire world was caught by surprise and disbelief when this pandemic hit the major countries and city of the world and spreading like wildfire about a year ago. The whole world was in a race to discover and come up with a magic vaccine and cure for this horrible virus we all are trying to survive. The articles that came out in the first breakout of the virus was questions like, is this it for the human race? What do we do? Where do we hide? Is there hope? Now that's one of the fundamental questions of life. Is there hope? Can I count on something in life? Is there really hope out there? It's asked every day by thousands of people in thousands of different ways. When you're sitting at the doctor's office waiting for a test, you hear the question, is there hope? When you're standing by the bedside of a hospital, you hear the question, is there hope? When a couple puts in so many months into marriage counseling, sitting there and getting nowhere, they're asking in their mind, is there hope? 
Now, studies <clears throat> have shown you can go 40 days without food, and three days without water, and you can go eight minutes without air. But you cannot go a single second without hope. You see, friends, hope is the essential of life. One of the essential of life. When hope is gone, life is over. Dr. Harold Wolf, who is a professor of Cornell at Cornell University in the medical school, did a study on the effect of hope in the human body. He studied 25,000 prisoners of war over an extended period of time to see what hope did to them and what difference it made. In his concluding study, he said, when man has hope, he is capable of bearing an incredible burden and cruel punishment. You see, hope makes the unbearable bearable. Many people today are feeling anxious and fearful and sometimes hopeless about many things today. It is very easy to find ourselves in hopeless situation nowadays, considering the lack of solid answers and solutions from all the experts, the emergence of new variants, the uncertainty about finding the real cure, the lies and deception we get over and over from those that we trusted the most. The question is, is there any place that we can find hope and get hope is there any place I can depend on? Is there someone I can depend on that I can count on on the crisis? When I can't come to the crisis of life, are there anything like that that I can count on? Now, friends, can I say this? One of the gifts that Christmas gives to humanity is the gift of hope through Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that we find hope in God. God is the source of hope. Here's what Romans 15, 13 says. It says, may God, <clears throat> the source of hope, fill you with joy and peace through faith in Him. In other words, as you put your faith in God, He gives you the peace, joy, and hope. And then He says, then you will overflow with hope. You know, the same guy, David, the same guy who wrote Psalms 23, the famous Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, wrote this about God. He said this, in your name I will hope, for your name is good. Now, specifically, God says, if you want to put your hope, if you want to put your hope in me, you need to put it in my name. Now, why does he say that? What does that mean? How do you put hope in a name? Now, in ancient cultures, they would choose a name because of what it meant, because of what it described. In fact, your name was usually the definition of your character. You were given a name that matches who you were. In the Bible, God calls himself by many different Hebrew names. And each one of this, those names is a description of his character. Each of those names is a promise to you. Each one of those names is a benefit that God says, I will provide for you. Now, at the end of the book of Ezekiel, God gives one of his names, and he says this, I am Jehovah Shammah. In Hebrews, that means, I am the God who is always there. There is no place that God is not, friends. There is no place you will go that God isn't. God has been in your past, He's in your present, and He's going to be in your future. He's in the good times and the bad times. Now, I don't know about you, but this has profound implication on where you find hope. See, if God is truly with me all the time, whether I feel it or not, if he's truly with me, that means there's three sources of hope that I can count on. There are three anchors of the soul, as the Bible calls them. Hope is the anchor of the soul. Things that I can count on no matter what. No matter what happens, I know life is not hopeless. The first thing I know about this, and knowing that God is with me all the time, is the fact that His presence is watching over me. When sudden crisis comes to our life, when you get a notice or a phone call from your doctor about a result of your test, when you've been told it's your last day of work, when someone you love so dearly walks out on you, there's a tendency to feel alone, to be frightened and be terrified. Now, God spoke 
to the prophet in the Old Testament, and he said this in Isaiah 41, then hear this. He said this, don't worry because I am with you, says God. Don't be afraid because I am your God. I will make you strong and I will help you. I will support you. Now, the good news is regardless of what happens in your life, regardless of what happens this coming year, regardless of what happens today, there is a God who will be with us. He will be there with you. Now, this is one, I, I don't know about you, but to me, that is one of the certainties of life that I can hold on. When I hold that certainty, I definitely will not lose hope. Today, while we face this global uncertainty, we can have the certainty that this God is watching over us. If you're feeling hopeless today about something in your life, you have forgotten how much God cares about you. You see, God had to remind his own people when they came to a point of hopelessness. And to me, this is one of those very powerful statements God gave his people. <clears throat> a very powerful statement of assurance. In Isaiah 46, when he said this, he said this. Now notice what he, God says. Listen, <clears throat> I have upheld you since you were conceived, and I have taken care of you from birth. Even when you were old, I will be the same. Even when your hair has turned gray, I will take care of you. I, have, I made you and I will take care of you. I will carry you and save you. Can you compare me to anyone? No one is equal to me or like me. Folks, this is the God saying those words. This is God saying those words. Yes, not only to, this, to his people, but to us today. The principle is still works today. Many people know God as the God of the commandments. We know his commandment. But here's a God who is saying to you at this moment, I have upheld you since you were conceived, and I have taken care of you from your birth. And then he said this, even when you are old, I will be the same. Even when your hair turns gray, I will take care of you. I made you and I will take care of you and I will carry you and save you. Let me ask you this. Has anybody ever made that promise to you? Has anybody said that? Who says anything like that, right? But God did. Not only is he with us, but the Bible says he guides us, not just watches us, but he guides us and advises us. I love this verse in Psalms 32, 8. He said, I will guide you along the best pathway of life. I will advise you and I will watch over you. You know why that is so powerful and critical in time of crisis? It is because in time of crisis and de desperation, we basically do not know what to do and where to go. We can't think right. We can't make wise decisions. You and I, we don't know the future. We cannot control the future. But God who knows and can control the future, guess what? He is willing to guide us and he's willing to advise us. I don't know about you, but that gives me enormous hope Here's the truth that will set you free. Here's the truth you need to remember this Christmas. You are never alone. And that action step that you need to take is you should never be afraid no matter what happens in this life. Here's the second source of, of, of hope. His purpose is working in me. Friends, no matter what's happening in our life, no matter what's happening in the, word, the world, the good, the bad, the ugly, God's purpose is always working in me. You know that one of the most difficult kind of question of life are, why is this happening to me? That's one of the most difficult questions. When people ask me that question, Pastor, why is this happening to me? When things happen in our life that doesn't have any reason, it just doesn't make sense. When you know you're doing all the right things and things are still turning for the bad, those are the kind of situations that are most difficult to handle. On the other hand, <clears throat> When you know, when you know there is a purpose behind your problem, it gives you enormous hope. 
And it gives you immense power to endure and persevere. And God says to you this, e this evening, I am working in your life and I have a purpose in whatever and no matter what happens in your life. Friends, God is doing a good thing in my life even when the situation is bad, even when I don't feel it, even when it doesn't make sense, and even when I have no understanding. I love this verse in Romans 8, 28. Most of you who have been in church for quite some time, some, some of you, this is your favorite verse. It says there, notice what it says. It says, we know that God causes all things to work together for good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Now notice, First, what it does not say. It doesn't say that all things work out the way I want them to. We would like it to happen that way, right? And we'd like to interpret that verse that way. But that's not what it say. It does not also say that all things have happy ending on earth. Because that's just not true. All things do not have happy ending on earth. Even godly people get COVID. Even godly people get sick. Good people suffer. What does it say? Now notice it says, we know. It says, we know that God causes all things to work together for good. What does that mean? It means we're not wishing. We don't have false hope. We, this is not just positive thinking. It says, we know. It's a certainty. We are confident of whatever comes after this. It says, God is working. God is going to work all things out for our good. And then it says that God is the grand designer of my life who causes all things to work together for good. Now notice it says all things. What does that include? The good, the bad, the indifferent, the things that I do, the things I don't do, the mistakes, the blunders I make, I cause, the bitter, the sweet, all those things that comes in my life. God causes all things to work together for good. Now I'd like for you to circle the word work together. I don't know if you bake, but I've never baked in my life, maybe once in my entire life. Now when baking a cake, all ingredients put together produces a very delicious cake. Ingredients by itself is very distasteful. Imagine eating flour by itself or baking soda or sipping a cup of oil. None of those things on their own taste good. Now I'd like to say this, there are a lot of things in your life that are very difficult to swallow. They are bitter going down and you choke on them. Some of you are going through that right now. You're saying, I can't swallow this. This is too much. Not all things in your life are good, but they work together for good. Notice that. Not all things are good, but God is a way of working all those things together. When those ingredients are put together, just like the ingredient of the cake are put together, it produces a cake and a cake is very good. Now, can I say this? God wants to make your life beautiful. And he's going to take all the ingredients in your life, even the things that are distasteful, even the things that are bitter, and he's going to put them together to bring out something beautiful in your life. Friends, can I say that? Only God can pull something like that. Now, here's the truth that you can hope for. Everything in life has a purpose and meaning. Everything, including that pain that you're going through right now, that has purpose and meaning. You just need to keep trusting. Here's the third source of hope, and it's this. God's power sustains me and keeps me going. You see, I don't know about you, but we all know this. Crisis and pressures and problems in life and, and challenges in life have a way of draining the life out of us. When you don't have power to keep going, you feel and you will feel hopeless. Friends, can I say this? Everyone has a breaking point. I'd even say this, even superheroes have limits and breaking point. You see, when you feel you cannot go, you can't go 
on any longer. When you feel like throwing the towel, when you feel like giving up on, on a dream, giving up on a marriage, giving up on a career, giving up on what God wants you to do, giving up on a relationship, giving up on a child, I'd like for you to read this verse with me. In Isaiah 40, 30, it says there, even youth grow weary and tired, and vigorous men stumble badly. Yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and they will not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Friends, can I say this? God has all the power you need to sustain you and keep you going. He said that. And you get it simply by waiting on Him, staying connected to Him. Because we read this in the first part of the, the, the session today. God is the source of all hope. He's the source of all power. He's got more power than you could possibly imagine. And that power, my friend, is available to you tonight. But you got to stay connected and you got to get connected. Now, the word waiting in that verse doesn't mean passively standing and not doing anything, like waiting in the doctor's office. To wait there means to stay connected, to plug into God's power while you're living your life and moving forward in the middle of the crisis or in the middle of a hopeless situation. Friends, God's power to sustain you only works when you remain connected to Him. Jesus called it abiding in Him, focusing on Him. Get your eyes off the crisis and get your eyes off people. Get your eyes off the pressure and get connected with God, who is the only and true source of your power in life. Stay connected with Him if you already are. And if you are not, get connected tonight. Here's the truth you can hang on and you can stake your life on. I can do and face all things in this life as I stay connected with God. So the action step I need to take is this. I need to make sure that I stay abiding in Christ. I stay connected with God. I will keep going no matter what. Friends, can I say this? Many times we disconnect with God. But I want to assure you, God has never disconnected with you. He is there. And finally, the final statement of hope is this. God's place is waiting for me. When things get unbearable in your life, you remember that our ultimate hope is in heaven. Paul says it like this. If all our hope is just here on earth, we should be pitied. We should be depressed. But there's more to life than just here and now. We do have an ultimate destination, friends. And God is preparing a place in heaven for you. Notice what Jesus said in John 14. He said this, Don't be troubled. You trust in God. Now trust in me. I am going to prepare a place for you. Now circle that word phrase. Jesus Christ says that heaven is a place. It is not a state of mind. It is not kind of nirvana or nothing less where you just float around bodiless, spiritless, or whatever. It is a real place, and God says, I am going to prepare a place for you. In other words, God offers His protection, His provision, His power and guidance as we live here on this earth, whether we acknowledge it or not. And then he says this, when your mission here is done, or when you are faced with what seem as the end of your rope here on this earth, or, or death is coming to get you, don't worry. It is not the end of you. You are just about to find out what eternal life is. And life with God, what life with God really means. Friends, can I say this? The acid test of your faith and your hope is how you handle death and how you're going to face death. Friends, I don't know about you, but knowing that I'm not going to die, 
and I'm going to live forever. That I might, yes, I might pass from this world, but the moment I leave this world, I'm on for eternity. That gives us a reason for hope. My friends, can I say this? Anybody can have great faith when things are going great. Studies have shown that one of the greatest fear of human being is the fear of dying. You see, when you choose to open your life to God and accept what He has offered you, Jesus Christ, His Son, you settle that very last source of hope. And the truth is this, no one can make that call for you except you. And I plead you, don't leave this world without settling that. God made it accessible for you to make it to heaven. It's there. That's the thrill of hope. God already said, I give you hope, not just on this earth, but into eternity. No long list of rules and procedures and process. Like when we do, when we want to immigrate or change citizenship, right? You don't have to wish to go to heaven when you are faced with debt. You don't have to hope that you will go there when your time here on earth is done. You can know it today and you can be sure of it and you can prepare for it. Friends, can I say this? I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but I'd like to say this, regardless of where you are in the spectrum of life, whether you are in your dying moment, whether you still have a thousand years to live, can I say this? Please do not take this hope for granted. Friends, God's way to eternal hope is not a religion. It is a person, and that person is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said it very clearly this way in John 14, 6. He said there, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Friends, nobody has ever made that claim. And then he said this. Notice what God said in 2 Peter chapter 3, 9. He said, he is restraining himself on account of you holding back the end because he does doesn't want anybody lost. He is giving everyone space and time to change. Friends, can I say this? No one has ever made that promise to you. No religious leader has ever made that claim. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. I am a pastor, and I'm your friend, and I love God, and I love you. Can I say this? Please do not leave this world without settling your eternity. God already gave us this hope. It's the thrill of hope when you realize, wow, it's here. Have you ever been looking for something and you couldn't find it all, when all the while it was right there in front of you? Friends, can I say this? Regardless of where you are in life's journey, there is hope. It is for you. And the truth is this, you and I are going to live forever. And so I'd like to say this, you do not have to fear death because God already gave you hope. Hope in this world, hope to carry hope, his presence that watches over you and you don't have to be afraid of anything. His purpose working in your life no matter what happens. He, you just need to keep trusting him. His power is sustaining you in whatever happens to us this coming new year or the coming days ahead of us. No matter what happened to you physically, mentally, emotionally. I want to let you know this. God will be with you, and you can keep going no matter what. And finally, I'd like to close with this. Should anything happen, and God calls you home, and death keeps your life, remember this. You do not have to fear death, because you will live forever with God. Would you bow your heads with me, please? God... You brought all these people today so that you can tell all of us, don't give up, don't do it. Don't give in to discouragement or despair or hopelessness. You want us to look up, God. You do not want us to despair 
this Christmas Eve. No matter what came up in our lives in this past few days, in this past few weeks, God, you do not want us to despair, but you want us to turn to you because you already have given us the hope that we need in life. I'm going to ask you to give it over to God. Give over to God. Father, I am sure that there are people here today who are feeling pretty beat up by the circumstances of life. Maybe many of them do not feel like celebrating Christmas today. They may be feeling hopeless. I know that there are others here today who are very discouraged and depressed by events that have happened just in the last few weeks or two. And I know that there are some who have been in the pit of despair and they've even considered, Lord, taking their life because of the pain. I thank you so much, Jesus, for bringing these people here today. Jesus Christ, I know that you love them very much, that I can stake my life on. And I pray that in this moment, that they will turn it all over to you, God, so that they can begin a new life of living hope. I don't know who you are, and I don't know where you are at this point in your life. Why don't you pray this prayer quietly, just where you are. If you're in a group right now, can I say this? Please allow everyone a space. If you're a family, many times we do not know what's going on in other people. Even our close family, we do not know what goes on in their life. So would you give everybody a space at this moment to remain quiet and be still? And I invite you to pray this prayer. God knows your thoughts. He knows what you are thinking right now. Just pray this prayer in your mind and He will hear you. Say this, Dear God, You know exactly how I've been feeling. You've seen the confusion and the sadness in my soul. And today I want to turn it all over to you. You alone are my hope. Help me more to be aware that you are always with me and that you're always watching over me. I want to thank you for working in my life, even when I didn't know it, even when I didn't understand it, even when I didn't feel it, even in the middle of all my pain and problems. I thank you for your purpose. I want to get to know you and follow your purpose for my life. So today, Jesus Christ, as much as I know how, I open my life to you. I want to build a relationship with you so that when I die, I can be with you. I want to put my trust in the hope of heaven. In your name I pray, amen. Father, I pray for everyone this evening who just prayed that prayer. Let them know, God, that today the thrill of hope has entered their life. And God, in your miraculous way, which only you can do, would you let them know, God, that beginning at this moment, you are with them and you are for them and you will never leave them. I pray for every family celebrating together this evening. May they experience, God, the joy and the thrill of hope in their own gathering, in their own family. Father, I pray for those who are sick at this moment, who are battling the virus and battling all kinds of diseases. Father, I pray that you come into their homes and to their bedrooms. And I pray, God, that you breathe air and you breathe life to each one of them. Raise them up, God, and let them know, even at this moment, Lord, maybe they cannot celebrate. You are with them and you are for them. Lord, I just pray that you would continue to strengthen every family member. I pray for every couple, Lord, strengthen their marriage. Let this Christmas be one that is full of memory and lots of joy, lots of peace, and lots of hope. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
I just like to say thank you again for joining us this Christmas Eve. May you have a God-filled Christmas Eve today. And tomorrow, Merry Christmas. I'd like to say this from our family, from our church staff, from our church core leadership, and our church community, we'd like to greet you a very Merry, Merry Christmas. Enjoy the evening and have fun building memories. God bless you all. I'll see you on Sunday. I love you all. The thrill of the wind